practical tips, the things you need to know, and nothing that you don't need to know when you come here to Edinburgh. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Erica. And we're your guides abroad. <laughs> so if you're planning a trip in August, make sure you make those reservations early. Get up high for a view. It rains in Edinburgh and that's okay. You're gonna be walking a lot. It's a very walkable city. But you can see the street being one of the inspirations for Diagon Alley. The, the trick with the Haggis is that I look up on the internet what is in Haggis. All right, thank you. <laughs> Okay, welcome to Edinburgh. Let's talk geography. We have Edinburgh right here, the main parts. You have the Old Town with the Royal Mile from Edinburgh Castle all the way down to Holyrood. When this area became too unsanitary in the 1700s, they built Newtown over here, all based on Princess Street. So that's the new town over there. You found a lot of hotels and great restaurants and bars over there, very lively over here. And then right in the middle is Princess Gardens. So great place to hang out when the sun's up, a lot of monuments, great views of Castle Rock or Edinburgh Castle. So you can get lost in Edinburgh if you know where you are in relation to these two high streets. I got met when you're in Princess Street, it's easy to look up a high street and know where you're at. So in Newtown, like right over my shoulder, there's these like pedestrian ways right between the major streets like Princess Street and Castle Street. I think that's the next one up. But these little pedestrian streets are great. They're full of like pubs and restaurants and they're very fun and lively. And I just like that there's like more, they're not completely pedestrian, but there's definitely more people than cars on them. And it's like just a nice little design. Very good design. Let's talk a little history. It's interesting, it hasn't always been called the Royal Mile, this stretch from the castle down to Holyrood. It came into being from a guidebook from 1901. And then they just describe it as a Royal Mile between the two locations and then kind of took off from there. And we are in front of St. Giles Cathedral, 800 year old cathedral. There's actually three ancient churches along the Royal Mile. The first one by the castle in Tronkirk are no longer practicing. This one's still practicing and it is a beautiful cathedral. I think parts of it date back to the 12th century. All right, let's keep heading down the road. Okay, so, so that right there is Castle Rock, Edinburgh Castle sitting on top of it, right? But it is a volcanic plug. And get this, a glacier came through, it hit the volcanic plug, and it caused the glacier to split, right? And so as a glacier moved, it couldn't take the hill that was behind the rock. So that is the ridge that forms the Royal Mile. And that's why the closes or alleyways run off that ridge on a really steep perpendicular like, you know, angle to Castle Rock. But I just like knowing that because it helps with the geology and it's kind of cool like that is the crag and then the ridge coming off is where Edinburgh was, ancient Edinburgh sat. So really cool. All right, and when the sun is out, like thank goodness like today, head to Princess Street Gardens. It's right between Old Town and New Town, and you'll find all the locals out here sunbathing, enjoying the fountain, enjoying the bouncy castles. And if you got kids, it's really nice to stay in Princess Street. And then you got this park and playground right across the street from you. And of course, it's killer views of Edinburgh Castle. All right. Traveling with kids, sometimes you're going to museums, and sometimes you're in Prince's Garden in Edinburgh, jumping on trampolines, because that's what they want to do. Let's talk crowds while we're on the Royal Mile. All right, so when's the best time to visit Scotland or Edinburgh? So the busiest time is the summer. That's where we're at right now is July. It's packed around here. Now, you gotta be careful. If you're not going to the fringe to go to the fringe or the military tattoo, those months are gonna be slammed. That's August. August, place sells out. And get this, the fringe is the third largest ticket event in the world behind the Olympics and the World Cup. So if you're planning a trip in August, make sure you make those reservations early. Christmas is also a busy time. Outside of that, shoulder seasons are great. If you're looking for a quieter time to visit, but right now in July, it's busy around here. 
Let's talk hotels. I recommend booking early for a hotel. There's a ton of options in Old Town and New Town. I gotta admit, you can stay in either place. It's such a walkable city and there's so much public transport, it works for you. Find the price that works for you. You got fancy places like this. For us in this trip, we're staying at Premier Inn. I gotta admit, it's nice, it's clean, it's convenient, no complaints at all. I read somewhere that Edinburgh has some of those expensive hotels or lodging in all of Europe. If you really want to save money, you can stay out of Edinburgh. We did that on one of our trips and we just took the bus in every day. I gotta admit, it worked out fine. That was before we had kids. Would I do it again? Maybe. I have to just look what the options are. Shop around for hotels, but definitely book early. All right, on to the next tip. Edinburgh is a hilly city, so I recommend packing comfy walking shoes. The Royal Mile, for example, is obviously on steep cobblestones. It can get slippery. It's steep. I mean, the Royal Mile is at 4% grade, which really isn't that bad. But definitely pack walking shoes. Oh, come on, bud. Get up. When you're packing for Edinburgh, keep in mind it's probably going to be a little bit chilly and rainy, no matter what time of year you come. When you have that in mind and you pack for it, you will be a lot happier traveling. So we suggest layers because it can be a little bit chilly, a rain jacket, it's even starting to rain on me now, comfortable shoes, which Jordan covered because it's hilly and you're going to be walking a lot. It's a very walkable city. And we normally don't travel with an umbrella and we still have it here, but I totally understand why you might want to have an umbrella here. We rented one from our hotel. You can also pick up a cheap umbrella here. I recommend having a nice little backpack to bring all your layers around in, a water bottle, maybe an umbrella, so you can go out and explore for the day. We are here in July, as you can see, not balmy, and it's been 57 degrees all day, every day. If you are coming to Edinburgh, you are probably really interested in history, and you're probably trying to visit Edinburgh Castle. We've visited here a few times and we really enjoy it every time. I feel like I learn something new every time, but I have some tips for you. Tickets sell out early. Tickets are sold out for the next few days. We're here in the high season, so book them early. If you can't book them early, book a tour because they often have a last minute availability. Another tip for you, we really love taking a guided tour. While audio tours are good, and I've learned a lot from them. I feel like a good animated in-person tour, you get a lot more of the history, especially of Scotland, of Greater Scotland, not just of the castle. And I think it's a really good way to get a little bit more depth to your visit. So we're on a great tour. I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can check it out for yourself and see if you want to book it. Waverly train station. This is the main train station in Edinburgh. It is ideally located. I'm right between Old Town and New Town, right in that little valley in between. It's your main train station if you're coming up from London or if you're heading out to Stirling for a day trip. It is the place to go. I'll be filming inside of it, but it gets really busy. But there's a Kilo station down below, Victorian station. It's a pretty cool place to go check out. I like train stations. Maybe I'll just go and hang out there. So Edinburgh is a really compact city it's easy to walk around especially if you are staying in the city center your two feet are probably the best way to get around the city but if you're not sure whether you should use public transportation or just walk we highly recommend using the city mapper app we use the city mapper app in pretty much every city we visit because it's great it gives you the options taxi bus walking it shows you what the options are now if you do decide to take the bus you probably don't need a day pass and all the bus companies are independently owned so you might take different bus companies throughout your stay taking the bus the buses do accept cash you will need to pay with exact change or you can pay with your contactless card and we've found that taxis if you need to take take a taxi they are readily available and easy to find when you're staying in the city center so edinburgh airport is a nice mid-sized airport it's pretty easy to get through you can get held up a little bit at security, but there is fast track if you do want to buy that for getting through security faster. Um, getting to and from the airport, you have a couple of options. Well, you have a few options. You can take a taxi. Um, you can also take the bus. So there's airport or buses. It's, I think, 550 one way, eight pounds round trip right now. And then there's also the tram. We opted for the tram. It was really easy. It picked us up on Princess Street. It was a 30 minute tram ride. There was space for our luggage kind of, and then we got to the airport. It was smooth, easy, and yeah, couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better experience. 
How long should your trip be? Well, when we lived in London, this was a perfect weekend getaway for us. And I've got to say, that was a great amount of time to give you a nice taste. So two full days here would be ideal. You can spend one day doing the castle and the Royal Mile. You can spend the next day wandering through really quaint neighborhoods, maybe treating yourself to tea, mm, a nice museum. And then if you want to stay a third day, that's a great time to do a day trip. You could head out to Stirling Castle or you can get a taste of the Highlands with like a really long day trip from here. Make sure you check out our Edinburgh full guide. Head to yourguidesabroad.com slash Edinburgh. There we'll give you all the information you need to know to get started to plan your trip. So again, that's at yourguidesabroad.com slash Edinburgh. Let's talk things to do in Edinburgh. We just did a lovely walk. We're staying in Newtown. It's a 15 minute walk to Dean Village. And then you have the water leaf there. And it's just a really cute village. You walk around it, take pictures of the bridges. It's just such a calming, relaxing place. We love the Royal Mile. The hustle and bustle of it though, can be a little much. If you're staying multiple days in Edinburgh, head out to Dean Village, do that walk along the river, go to St. Bernard's Well, and just keep going into the Stockbridge neighborhood. Right now I'm on Circus Lane, which is very cute. Reminds me of a muse in London. Beautiful spot right here, great gardens. You also have Patisserie Florentine right next door to this lane too. Great place to grab a coffee and just relax in Stockbridge area. We're gonna keep going and hit up some lunch, but this is a great thing to do if you're staying multiple days in Edinburgh. So there's plenty of shopping on the Royal Mile if you're looking for like souvenirs and trinkets and things like that. But if you're coming out into some of the other neighborhoods that are really central Edinburgh, but a little bit off the beaten path, you can find some great independent shops for clothing and food and other souvenirs and things you might want to take home. We're in Stockbridge right now, exploring. I'm gonna say the Stockbridge High Street is probably my favorite high street in the UK. It has so many cute shops on it and charity stores, and it's just like a local place. What do you expect to find here? Okay, Royal Mile has tons of shopping on it. You'll find all these little gift shops. A lot of them are good for souvenirs and like fun little things, but to find authentic things, Tron Kirk is a really good place to come. It's a maker's market. Also, we like to head out to the other neighborhoods like Stockbridge. A lot of cute stores out there, artisanal boutique stores. But if you're looking for like tartan things, check out like the tartan mill that's up by the castle. Wow, just coming to Tron Kirk, it is an old church. This is beautiful. Welcome to Victoria Street. This is a really popular street. It's popular for colorful reasons. First of all, the colorful buildings, the curve of the street. It's a beautiful cobblestone street. It's really cool. Nice to like pubs here too, a little shopping. Also popular because J.K. Rowling wrote in a cafe here. She wrote Harry Potter. I'm actually right next to the Elephant Cafe, the original cafe that she wrote it and burned down, but I believe it was here. A lot of people say it's this one, then they say it's not, but maybe they rebuilt in the same spot. That's what the sign says out front anyways. But you can see the street being one of the inspirations for Diagon Alley. Pretty cool spot. All right, when you are on the Royal Mile, you will see lots of closes. Closes are alleyways that go off the Royal Mile and feel free to explore them. Some don't lead to much. Some lead to pubs or restaurants or they're cut throughs to other streets and some like this one lead to a beautiful garden. Get up high for a view. All right, so when you're in Edinburgh, get like a good view of the city. Edinburgh has seven hills for you to climb. Right now we're on Calton Hill. This one's at the end of Princess Street, and I hear it's really good for sunset. We're not gonna get sunset tonight though. Be great views all around. You also have Arthur's Seat, which is right over there. That's the tallest hill in Edinburgh. It's quite a climb though. Recommend being like fit and ready to go for it. Some people say they can do it in 30 minutes. Others say an hour and a half. Also good places for a view is Camera Obscura. That's right next to Edinburgh Castle. It's a really cool fun museum for kids but a great view from up above edinburgh castle also has excellent views of course because you're at the top of royal mile and then also the national museum of scotland has a terrace on the seventh floor we haven't been there so i don't have footage of it but take my word for it sounds pretty awesome okay so in scotland or in edinburgh there's some good museums obviously the really common ones are the national galleries you have one behind me which is the portrait you have the national and you also have two modern galleries also 
So good places to get out of the rain and they're free to enter also. If you have more than like a couple days in Edinburgh, this is a great place as a starting point for day trips. So a very popular one is heading up to Stirling. You can take the train to Stirling, go visit the really, really charming town and the castle, Stirling Castle. Another option is a lot of tours leave from here. You can do like a one day, very long tour up to get like a taste of the Scottish Highlands or also three day tours leave from here. We have some listed on our website. So head to yourguidesabroad.com and check them out. Let's talk restaurants in Edinburgh because there's a lot of good ones. I mean, there's a lot of them. You can get fine dining to little, great little pub restaurants. We're at Holly Rood 9A right now. It's such a cozy little pub, but you gotta try the food here, obviously. In Scottish, it's scrans, but find a favorite place, book it in advance, get a booking. Because if you have a favorite place on your list that you find from like an influencer or somebody, make sure you book it. A lot of people do whiskey experiences instead of whiskey tastings. There's quite a few of them, like the Johnny Walker whiskey experience. I haven't tried those, but if that looks like fun, go for it. There's one up also up by the castle too. <laughs> okay, when in Scotland, you have to have haggis, of course. And uh, I did it this time with a burger. When in Rome, right? You gotta try it. Have whiskey, have some haggis, enjoy yourself in Scotland. I sure do. But give this, haggis wasn't legal in America until just recently because there's lamb law in, the, in it. So you couldn't, they couldn't have it in that, but they changed the rules or changed what they put in it. But we can find haggis in our local grocery store. So it's pretty cool. All right, I'm done eating my haggis burger. The trick with eating haggis is that I look up on the internet what is in haggis. And that is how you eat it. These practical tips around Edinburgh, we hope these will help. We know they will help. Yeah. What will also help is check out our free travel guide to Edinburgh. We have a link down below. It's also at yourguidesabroad.com slash Edinburgh. And it will give you where to stay and what else we'll have. Oh, just lots of details about getting around and things to do. And if you didn't take notes in this video, cause you didn't, <laughs> it gives you what you need to know. And like we mentioned, some tours and other information is all in the description below. We try to give as many helpful resources as we can, cause that's what we like to do. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.